GCSE drama component one devising top tips for devising at a distance I'm your principal moderator for component one Kelly Jessup I'd like to start with a statement this support session was recorded on the 12th of June 2020 as it currently stands, we are still awaiting confirmation from the DfE and Ofqual in regards to any changes that might be made to the requirements of the qualification. When information is released by them, we will be in touch to provide you with the guidance you need to move forward. With this in mind, the information I'm going to give you today is based on the assumption that the requirements for the assessment of component one will remain basically the same. We will share with you any new developments and guidance as soon as we can. We put information on our website, so on all pages in the top right hand corner, there is a tab that is labeled COVID-19 update. Plus, we share information through email updates on our communities page and the subject page for drama and performing arts. And finally, through social media such as Facebook and Twitter. As principal moderator and a GCC drama teacher myself, I understand the challenges faced by all teachers at this difficult time, and in particular, the unique challenges posed for drama teachers and students. The purpose of this session is not to offer training, but to share ideas that we as drama teachers may use to approach the new challenges of devising performance work, collaborating in groups, and performing for a live audience all whilst maintaining the social distancing and hygiene, hygiene guidance and rules as set out by the government, DfE and your individual school leaders. So the aims and objectives. We will recap on the demands of component one and any implication of social distancing, including timings, group sizes and portfolio production. We will consider practical ways of devising and delivering GCSE component one in light of social distancing requirements, including the approaches to design roles. We will address common issues and frequently asked questions. And we will also point you in the direction of further support and guidance. Specification overview and recap. Component one, NEA or coursework component is worth 40% of the qualification. That's 60 marks in total. A01, A02 and A04 are internally assessed and externally moderated. A01 is to create and develop ideas to communicate meaning for theatrical performance. A02, to apply theatrical skills to realize artistic intentions in live performance. So this is performance skills or design skills. And A04 is to analyze and evaluate the student's own work. There are two parts to the assessment. The first part is a portfolio which can be written or recorded. The portfolio assesses A01 and A04 with a total of 45 marks. 30 marks are assigned to the assessment of A01 and 15 marks are assigned to the assessment of A04. There is then the devised performance or design realization. This assesses A02. 15 marks are assigned for the final performance or design realization. Timings, group sizes and social distancing. So you can see on there the grid that is taken directly from the specification, which outlines the group sizes, the recommended minimum times for the performances and the maximum performance times. There is a minimum group size, as you can see, of three and a maximum group size of six. And this is performance students within the group. In addition to that minimum and maximum, you can have one design student from each of the four disciplines and that's assigned to each group also. To maintain social distancing rules, it may be advisable to consider smaller performance group sizes, so three to four rather than five to six, with possibly groups of three 
being um, easier to maintain the social distancing rules. In light of social distancing, there is no requirement to use a non-assessed individual to bring the group size to the required minimum of three in the 2021 series. This means that if you have fewer than three students in your centre taking GCSE drama, then they can devise as a pair or as an individual. Or if you have a group of three and one student drops the course or is not entered, then the group may continue devising as a pair. Under any of the above circumstances, permission must be sought from drama assessment before proceeding. So this can be done via email at drama.assessment at pearson.com. Please retain the email permission as you will need to include this in the pack with your sample of work that you send for moderation. Finally, moderators will be flexible with timings and understand the challenges of devising in these complex times. So due to the challenges faced by students when trying to devise a performance whilst maintaining social distance, the recommended minimum times of 10 minutes and 20 minutes may be more flexible in 2021. Students should try to devise work that meets these minimum performance times. However, if the work is under these timings, please remember they are recommendations. Mark what you see according to the assessment criteria and please do not panic. There is a regulatory requirement that groups must complete a minimum performance time of four minutes for this component and that is regardless of what size group they are working in. There is no longer a requirement to award zero marks for performances under the regulatory minimum time requirement. This information has been amended in the specification available online and should be supportive of students during these challenging times. Students' performance work and designs who do not meet the regulatory minimum performance time of four minutes should be assessed by teacher assessors against the assessment criteria. However, students should be awarded a mark in level one or level two only. So there is a cap on the marks if the work is under the regulatory time and that's a cap of the top of level two on that assessment or criteria for AO2. How social distancing can support the production of the portfolio evidence. So students are required to answer six questions in their portfolio. You can see those on the slide and they are also to be found in the specification. The six questions can be used as headings. So if the students are writing their work, they can be used as direct headings and addressed directly. Or they can be used as questions or prompts for a candidate who wishes to record their portfolio. Students who want to write in continuous prose can absolutely do so, so long as they address these questions somewhere within the body of their work. Students should be working on producing their portfolio throughout the entire devising process. Some of this could be completed as home learning to support the blended approach to education that we're obviously all now facing. So a flipped classroom approach. The guidance states that students must be directly supervised for a sufficient portion of the creation of the work to allow teachers to confidently authenticate each student's work. Therefore, ensure that some of the work is directly supervised and that there are ways to monitor work produced from home or just be confident that the work is produced by the students so that you can sign the documentation. It does say directly supervised for a sufficient portion of time. So it's up to you knowing your candidates the way you do to decide what is a sufficient proportion for you to sign that authentication um, confidently. Students could record their responses to the portfolio questions at home and the work could be presented on recording if this is supportive in terms of working from home. So if they're recording that work, you can see that they're, they're doing that, that they've, they've done it live, they've recorded it, that it's their own work and that might make it easier to complete the portfolio um, using this sort of blended learning and for you to assess the work and to be confident it is the student's own work. Question three and four focus on refinements and rehearsals. 
and this is as well as artistic decisions. So social distancing could form a large part of this, this um, section of the portfolio very successfully and supportively. Students can talk about the refinements they've had to make in light of the new rules. Question five and six focus on the end product, the final design or performance. Students can evaluate and analyze how successful their final performance was and celebrate the successes they have had in terms of thinking differently and creatively due to social distancing. The, um, and also the issues that they've faced because of social distancing, they may have had to create scenes in a way they didn't initially want to. Theatrical devices and techniques for devising at a distance and teaching techniques to socially distance. So the first slide here are some teaching tips and these actually come from Open Drama UK. So have a seating plan or group plan projected on the whiteboard or on the floor and make sure obviously that seating plan or group plan is socially distanced. Students should work in the same groups and ideally work in the same space for each session, which obviously component one lends itself to that approach. Do not share resources such as theatrical masks, puppets and props. Keep doors and windows open if possible. Allow students to enter one at a time and direct them to their working space. Consider keeping a contact register for your own records so you know who's been in contact with which of the students and staff, obviously socially distanced. Technical equipment should be operated by the teacher or where it needs to be operated by the student for exam work. Antibacterial wipes should be used to clean all equipment and obviously regular hand washing is crucial. Mobile phones could be used for playing music and for doing research, but you must consider your school's policy there. Keep costumes simple. Is it possible that students can supply their own costumes, take them home and wash them after each session? Finally, clean down chairs, blocks and wipe surfaces after each session. So you can see the link there to www opendramauk.org and we thank them for this information and guidance. So techniques for devising at a distance. Consideration can be given to the structure and style of performance to support devising from a distance. So episodic work and theme or topic based devising rather than a more narrative or realistic approach may lend itself to social distancing. Themes, topics and stimuli that lend themselves to distance or separate characters are more distant proxemics. So for example, it could be a theme of isolation or mental health, bullying. You could look at cybercrime or something that, that's done at a distance naturally. Mistaken identity. Yes, you can have comedy in there as well. So those sorts of themes may be supportive of distant proxemics. Site-specific theatre could be considered. So could you use an outside space if possible? Peter Brook's um, empty space approach may be a, a good way to go so that you're not filling the space with set or props. So keeping that space very um, empty, I suppose, of anything that can be contaminated except your actors. Use of media, projections, audio and video work to support the live performance. Techniques that allow students to stand in their own space and socially distance as they're working are also really important. Um, so possibly threading through their work monologues. So for example, if you had a group of three to four, they all had one monologue each, their monologue lasted just over a minute, then you would have already met the regulatory minimum timings of four minutes. So then anything else that they devise or develop is a bonus in terms of ensuring the work isn't capped at level two. Thought tracking, direct address and asides, narration could be useful, so that's going to move the narrative, move the story on. You could have each performer narrating or playing the role of the narrator at different moments in the piece, and they could even use different narration techniques or styles. News reports and verbatim, verbatim speech from research could be useful, so you could take a didactic approach to the intentions for performance. Techniques that focus on interesting ways to use dialogue and speech to create character and relationship, relationships. 
You could have lots of choral work, so Greek chorus style um, theatre, repetition of dialogue and creation of echoes, shared speech delivered from their own socially distanced space. You could overlap speech to, to, to develop relationships and characters. So for example, friends who are having problems in a relationship, they could both share their experiences. The actors overlap the last few words of one character's dialogue with the start of the other character's dialogue, and they continue throughout the whole of that direct address. So going backwards and forwards between the two characters. It's a nice approach and a nice way to keep characters socially distanced while still developing relationships. Use of soundscapes or atmosphere created through vocal sounds could be useful. You could use um, song or lines of poetry to support the intention for the audience. And voiceovers or recorded sound could be used to support the live vocal work that we see in the performance itself. Techniques that focus on interesting ways to use space and movement to create characters. So relationships and to move the narrative forward. Split stage obviously is an obvious idea here where the split stage is used for different locations but maybe even different time zones or different states of mind. Greek chorus movement techniques such as canon, unison or repetition of movements and gestures. You could have choreographed movement sequences that are symbolic and that demonstrate characters or relationships and their feelings. Use of levels and inventive use of space and proxemics. Techniques such as chairs duets, which obviously is inspired by frantic assembly, but doing that two meters apart actually creates quite an interesting effect. Movement motif work, either solo or distanced. Use of mirroring for symbolic or realistic movements and gestures. Use of mime sequences, and this is an opportunity to again not use any properties if, if we go for a real mime based approach to the work. Use of theatrical masks, but obviously only if the masks are bought for the individuals, they're not shared and they're cleaned thoroughly after each use. So we've had some frequently asked questions due to the COVID-19 and um, social distancing experience. So I'm going to attempt now to answer, answer those frequently asked questions for you. First one is what happens if the students were halfway through their devising? Are they expected to start again? The short answer is absolutely not. If the students are in the same bubble or, um, sorry, in the same bubble and you're able to teach them in their original devising group, then they should continue with the work they have started. They will obviously need to give some consideration to style, techniques and structure, and they may need to amend some of those ideas to accommodate social distancing. However, this could be an exciting opportunity to further develop their work in new and interesting ways. So that can really be embraced, but yeah, absolutely not. They do not need to start again. The um, adaptation of their work in light of social distancing will also be supportive to students in meeting the demands of question three and four when writing or preparing their portfolio. So a reminder, question three is what were some of the significant moments during the development process and when rehearsing and refining your work? So obviously they can talk about what they've had to amend and, and change and ref refine and some of those refinements will be significant moments. And for question four, how did you consider genre, structure, character, form, style and language throughout the process? Well, all of those things are massive considerations now in terms of maintaining our social distance. So again, anything that they refine or amend or create from, from fresh, if that's the way your centre is approaching the work, then that question really lends itself to the experiences we're all having at the moment. The second question, how do we approach devising with social distancing in place? Um, well, this will depend on your school circumstances in terms of how often you will see your drama students and how they will be grouped and the space that you are able to work in. But really, it's lots of things that I've covered already in the presentation. So small group sizes of three or four, work to the minimum timing rather than the maximum, split stage, monologues, direct address, thought, thought tracking and narration, choral work or shared speech with the students two metres apart, Part, 
speech that overlaps and is delivered directly to the audience, an episodic approach, you could use placards, non-realistic approaches, movement sequences, solo or distanced, students can work on relevant themes that help to create social distance, use of mime to avoid the need for properties, theatre and education, a didactic teaching approach to the work could be useful for maintaining social distance and carefully planned design routes on offer. This leads me to the third question, which is how does social distancing work for students who are design candidates? So if you have students who have opted for a sound and lighting designer's role, then there should be no problem socially distancing. Some students may actually find these routes supportive. You just need to ensure that all equipment touched is appropriately cleaned using antibacterial wipes or fluids or whatever approach your school has implemented. For set designers, consideration would need to be given as to how props are used, if at all. Props should not be shared, we know that, um, and they should be so stored separately for each performer or they should be stored by the performer. They should be cleaned thoroughly after and before use. Sets such as painted flats, backdrops and projections may be supportive of the circumstances we find as ourselves in here and allow someone to continue on a set designer route. Costume designers. The performer's family member should take measurements on behalf of the designer to ensure social distancing. So if I were the performer, I would need to get my mother to take my measurements so that I can pass them back to the costume designer. Um, costumes could be washed in school where possible after designed and then taken home and kept safe by the performer, washed after every use at home by the performer, right? What I mean here is if a costume designer has sourced, made um, or purchased a costume and they then bring that into school, really it would need washing. So if possible, and I appreciate this may not be possible in all centers, the costume designer could pop that costume into a school washing machine when it's finished, the performer can take it out of the washing machine and take it home. And from then on, it would be the performer's responsibility to bring the costume in, to wash it once they'd worn it. Theatrical masks must not be shared. Again, these should be kept by the performer and should be cleaned thoroughly. Any makeup or hair designs that are part of that costume design should be designed by the design candidate but applied by the performer themselves so they would follow the design to um, obviously put on their own makeup and to style their own hair. There's just the slide here to remind you about the design students additional documentation that's obviously there in the specification for you as well. Okay, can my students perform without an audience? Yes, your audience can simply be the teacher recording the work. You could have another group as the audience if you wish to do so. Obviously, they would need to be socially distanced. Socially distanced family and friends can be an audience, but Obviously, we appreciate that some centres do not want um, additional people on site, so that may not be an option. A small group of socially distanced teachers may be an option, but again, some centres want to keep all of their bubbles completely separate as per the guidance, so that may not be possible, but certainly it can be as simple as just the teacher who is recording the work. It is really what works for you in your space and is agreed as the safest approach by your school for all involved. Do we still need to record the device performance for the moderator and as evidence? Yes. As far as we are currently aware, the moderation process will happen as usual. Therefore, you must record all of the performances as evidence and store these safely in the centre. If you are using site-specific locations for performances or performing outside, please try to ensure the recording is high quality. Just do your best. If it is difficult to film in your studio space, ensuring all students are on camera at all times while socially distanced, then please pan and zoom accordingly. Do your best to keep students on camera where possible. 
Remember that all student identifications must also be recorded at the beginning of their performance and this must be conducted to maintain social distance. So it may be that you have the camera in a static place and students walk into um, a spotlight, if you like, into the eye of the camera, deliver their identification and walk out of that space and the next candidate walks in. What adjustments will be made due to the fact that students have missed over a full term of practical work already? Well, as shared in this presentation, as it currently stands, we are still awaiting confirmation from the DfE and Ofqual in regards to any changes that might be made to the requirements of the qualification. When information is released by them, we will be in touch to provide you with the guidance you need to move forward. With this in mind, we must work on the assumption that the requirements for the assessment of component one will remain the same unless informed otherwise. We will share with you any new developments and guidance as soon as we can. This will be on our website under the COVID-19 update, through email updates, on our communities and subject pages for drama and performing arts, and through social media. As soon as we know anything, you will know as well. Further support and questions. So you can contact your subject advisor, Paul Webster, and that would be on teachingperformingarts at pearson.com to ask any further questions. You can ask questions on Twitter at Pearson Performing Arts or Facebook Pearson Edexcel GCC Drama. Paul does send out his subject page. You could also sign up for these updates. Um, and as soon as Paul has information, he, he emails those out to everyone that he has on, on his list for updates. You can ask the expert, which is a really good way to get your um, answers, that your questions answered, um, knowing that all of the information that you're receiving is accurate and up to date. Final thoughts. So these are challenging times for us all. Therefore, if you are not sure about anything, then please ask the expert. There are no silly questions. We are all here as a drama community to share ideas and to support each other. Everyone has their own COVID-19 experiences, but we are all in the same drama boat and the students may wish to draw on their experiences or themes related to COVID-19. If so, then this can be supported and can help to inform the production of their portfolio evidence. Happy devising and please stay safe. <laughs>